I'm going to be talking to you about the phrase to kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> We've all heard it. I have some issues with this phrase. <laughs> Firstly, who's going around throwing stones at birds? <laughs> if you're going around killing birds with stones, you have issues. <laughs> if you're going around killing birds with stones so often that you need a more time efficient way of doing it, <laughs> that is an obsession. <laughs> We're using a phrase wrong. We use it when we found an easy way of doing two things at once to save time. Killing two birds with one stone isn't easy. <laughs> Just take the physics of it. You're going to have to hit the first bird hard enough already. Then either the stone or the deceased bird <laughs> is going to have to ricochet onto the secondary bird. That's not a one stone job. If anything, you're going to miss a lot more birds than if you're just trying to kill one bird. We should be using a phrase when you try to do two things at once, but it backfires horrifically. For example, washing your reds with your whites. You thought it would save you time, but instead you've screwed yourself there and now you have to play cricket in pink. That's why the South African team did it back in 2011. They claimed it was for breast cancer awareness. when really they were just trying to kill two birds with one stone. I'm not done yet. Now, you might think that was a weirdly dated reference for me to use and quite incongruous from someone who obviously doesn't know anything about cricket. See, what I did there was I typed the phrase play cricket in pink into Google. It's what I do if a certain bit isn't quite good enough yet and I need to pad out my routine. <laughs> also, also, I like to add a level of research to my stand-up so we all learn something along the way. <laughs> Essentially, I derived two benefits from one singular action. <laughs> now, you might be trying to think of some loopholes to make killing two birds with one stone easier. One loophole you might try. Siamese birds. <laughs> Fair enough, uh, they do exist. They found a couple back in Arkansas in 2008. <laughs> However, if your strategy is to wait around for a set of conjoined twin birds, that is equivalent to going to a bar and waiting for Siamese twins to show up if you're trying to have a menage à toi. <laughs> Not an effective strategy, a threesome already quite difficult to obtain. You're going to have to attract one partner hard enough already. <laughs> then that sexual attraction is going to have to ricochet <laughs> On to the secondary partner. I don't know how sexual attraction works, but I do know projectile physics. And I assume they're the same. Another loophole you might ask what if it's a pregnant bird? Well, then you're a moron, because birds don't get pregnant. <laughs> However, let's indulge that idea for a second. <laughs> let's say you were a, a bird were clutching an unborn egg. You kill both the bird and the egg. Does that count as killing two birds with one stone? Debatable. <laughs> It's a grey area. Turns out it's pretty hard to define when life starts for a bird. Some say it's when the egg is fertilised. 
others say you don't count them till they've hatched. <laughs> That is a slogan for the avian pro-choice campaign, by the way. Don't... <laughs> the avian pro-life campaign, their slogan is simply, life starts at egg. <laughs> Fair enough. Two sides to every argument, I say. It's not my place as a non-bird <laughs> to publicly debate what is primarily a bird issue <laughs> in the company of exclusively non-birds. <laughs> Finally, there is one good loophole I've thought of. It's when you've seen a bird in a bush. <laughs> you grab that bird, place it in your hand. And now it's worth double. <laughs> so you bash it with a stone. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you have killed two birds with one stone. I've been Ken Chang. You've been a fantastic audience. Mr. Ken Chang. Back to you, Steve. Thank you, Penny.